Hey guys, what's up? Penguin Tech here. Today I'm going to upgrade my CPU cooler. But before that, I'm, I'm going to give you a short walkthrough to my current PC. So this is my current PC here. This is the Fractal Nano S. I have an ITX build here. As you can see, everything is quite cramped inside. I, mean, I should take off this panel. All right. So as you can see here, I have a master liquid light 120 meter right, right up here with an ID cooling fan which is a 120 millimeter fan. I am going to replace this cooler which is the current box is here with the cooler I've just bought from Taobao which is the ID cooling force pro plus which I have bought for about USD $40 or 160 ringgit. So as you can see, I will be upgrading for 120 to a 280 AL cooler, which is a more than double the size. So it should give me a very good cooling performance uh, for your information. Right now I'm running Ryzen 1600X inside here, which is now clocked at 3.8 gigahertz. So once I have upgraded to this cooler, I believe I can push even further. Because this is a 280 millimeters cooling, with two 140 millimeters fan, the only position I can I can put the fans and the radiator is here. So I'll be removing two of my intake fans here and put the radiator here, while this one will be replaced by a normal. So let's begin. Now we can take off the cooler, but I think it's better for us to take off the fan first. So let's take off the fans. What I like about Cooler Master's screws, what I like about Cooler Master screws is that you can screw another screw in 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 the in the screw head here, so it makes it easier to radiator right in front of your case. But the problem is that it will introduce some more headroom here, which is about this size, so you might have to take account of your radiator dimension. Fan is coming down now. Okay. Now we just need to remove fan connector here and pull this out. Alright, now it's off. This is the ID cooling fan. Much noisier than the standard fan that is provided for this cooler, the master cooler fan. So I don't recommend to buy this fan. It's it's cooler, but it's much noisier. So now we can take off the cooler. Four screws here. So make sure you hold your cooler before you re remove your last screw. Okay. Now it's off. So this is the cooling fan, the radiator for master liquid light 120 millimeters. This is a 25 millimeter stick radiator. As you can see here, it's asymmetrical, whereby the top is actually thicker than the bottom. So when I install it, you cannot install with this orientation. You can only install vertically. So take note on that. So now we're going to remove the pump head. So this cooler comes support with AM4 socket. So it's fairly easy to install and also to remove. You just need to unscrew these two screws. And we're off. And now we need to remove the pump connector. So my pump connector is at the back. And we need to clean our CPU. So it looks like I did not cover the, all of the CPU surface with my thermal paste. I'll take note on that. I'll just put more thermal paste next time. It's actually easier if you remove your graphic card. I think I'll remove it later on because it, it makes it makes installing my cooler so much easier since I need I'll need this space to install the cooler. There we go. Alright it's clean now. Our next step is to remove the front panel. Pop this front panel off. Whoops, noise tampering form, which is a nice touch. And here is the filter. Before that, I'm going to disconnect these fans. So this is my the back of my panel. As you can see here, it's quite messy, but please bear with me on that. And my front coolers are connected with these fan headers, which is connected to a splitter, which is connected to the motherboard. I'm sorry about that, I, I used the double tap to tap my hard disk in because I lost the screws to install this hard drive here. So now we're going to take off 
These two fans here, these case fans are good. They are very quiet and provides a lot of airflow into my case. There we go. And it should come off now. So now we'll move to the bottom fan. And now as you can see, my case is almost bare now. Right? So I'm going to remove my GPU, which is the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 588 gig version because you will make the installation so much smoother when I install my fans and the radiator at the, at the front of my panel. As you can see here, my RGB strips are making a mess around here. I'll plug the power connector to my GPU first, then unscrew the screws. So now I need to push this button that holds the GPU in and uh, we can now pull the GPU out. At the same time, let me remove my bottom fan because I'm not going to use it anymore. So what I'm going to do is to install is to install this this to the front of my panel. Taking out the fans. Also another white fan. Now I really wonder if I should put it at the front or at the back. But it's okay, I'll just put it at the front. Alright. Because I want my fan to be closer to the radiator so that more air is moved through the radiator. So I've decided to put it to put this at the front of my fans. So what this does is to reduce the vibration noise. Because when when a fan spins, especially at at high speeds, they'll vibrate and then it will the vibration may cause some noise to your case. So this will re reduce the vibration and makes the cooler run quieter in theory actually you, in theory actually I, I don't think it matters a lot actually here's the second second one I'm going to do the same there we go so the fans are ready and it's time to take out the radiator I gotta install the backpack so in this case I will have to remove my hard disk here so I, I'll have to disconnect this power connect this and take this off there we go and now we have to go to the front of the case because to unscrew the, these screws here so that we can make the space for the back plate so we actually have to remove these screws one two three four that comes pre-installed with with my motherboard which is the AB350 ITX from Astro okay here we go the box is off so the back panel the original back panel has come off this is actually metal but as you can see there's a piece there's a plastic layer on top of it with some gaps in between I suppose this helps with cooling and reduce damage as well as the possibility of short circuit when in contact with the motherboard what we'll need to use is this universal bracket for Intel and LMD alright and this will come in handy as well 2 to 1 2 to 1 fan header and these screws that we need that we use to screw in our our cooler and radiator and the AMD bracket. So according to the manual, we will need this. We will need four of this long nut. So this is the correct one with holes on here instead. So now we're going to try this. Right now it fits properly. You can see my my screws here. One, two, one, two, three, four. So now you have to put these black things on here on all four screws and then you screw this down this long knuckle honestly this is my first time installing this kind of cooler that we you need to install a socket do the X pattern so that fits properly with equal pressure on all four sides and now you just slowly screw all four until you think it's Enough. So this is the bump head. As you can see, it's pre-installed with in Intel's bracket. So what we need to do is to switch 
with these empty brackets. So I have to take these screws out. And now I have to install these empty brackets like this. Keep in mind this is not at the bottom of the pump head, but it's actually on the top of the pump head. So you need you need to hold it down and then screw it. Okay, we're good to go. So I have routed my fan cables through this hole here. I purposely rotate my fan so that my cables are the closest to this routing point. So right now we're going to fit the air IO cooler inside this case. Okay. It is definitely a bit tough to install here due to the space constraint as you can see here. Okay, so I finally put my radiator in. I'm going to put back my fan. Now we're going to try to lock down the fans with the cooler. Honestly, this is the hardest part. I have no idea how am I supposed to do this. I suppose it's best that I can go my, my radiator is as high as possible. A point here, I'm just going to screw it in here. Okay, at least, it, at least it's not moving around anymore. Okay, I'm going to lock in second point. I'm just playing guessing games right now. Jesus Christ. Nope, it doesn't screw in. So, uh, Okay. Oh! Oh my god, it is! Oh my god, it locked though. Okay. Now for the second fan. Jesus Christ, my rubber is coming off. Turn this point. Let's go to cool it in. Okay. Great, we have found it. Okay, good. Great, this is good. So we basically got our cooler into position now, so I'm just going to tighten my screws here. Great! Okay, so our radiator is in now, thank god. So for the ease of the remote removal in the future, I've only used four screws to screw in the fan and the radiator onto my case. So that it's easier to take it off if I need to in the future. So just make sure every screw is tight. So here is my MX. For Arctic thermal compound here, I'm going to apply more this time onto my processor. Should be way enough. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put my cooler orientation like this. But before that, you have to remember to remove this protective layer. Yeah, it's the pure copper here. So now we're just going to align the screws in and then uh, use this nut to screw them in. Again, we're going to follow the X pattern. So when you screw, when you put your pump in, make sure you don't put your pump power connector underneath the pump. So you gotta make sure of that. Now I'm just screwing all the screws here and then tighten down the screws. Yep, I think that's all. After that we'll need to connect our fans, which I would prefer to connect it to the fan sweater that was provided inside and then connect it to a CPU fan header. There we go. Now we just need to tuck it nicely somewhere around here so that it doesn't look that messy. There we go. And so the last thing to do here is to connect the SATA powered cooler head with a SATA cable. And everything should work later on.
So I have my AIO cooler installed now as a, and as you can see it in the C shape. That's the Frost Floor Plus 280mm AIO CPU cooler. So I'll be doing a full testing on this cooler and compare it to my previous AIO cooler that is the Master Liquid Light 120mm and we'll see the good result. So do check out on my channel. And that's it. That's all for me guys. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Ciao.